you become interested in gerontology? It was a pure market-driven decision. Uh, you probably don't get that response from many people. I started uh, graduate school at age 39. I had four children and actually moved from uh, the West Coast, Seattle area, to Penn State University. I was working on my master's thesis that really was uh, in midlife women. I didn't consider it aging at all, looking at uh, uh, tangi tangible and non-tangible -tangi interactions between um, parents and mid middle-aged women. Um, not really interested in aging at all, and I had a great mentor. Everyone should have a good mentor, and then reciprocate down the road. But uh, my um, master's thesis chair at that time, then later my dissertation chair, came to me and said, uh, I want you to apply for an NIA pre-doc fellowship. And I said, I don't want to do aging. And he uh, said, um, yeah, you do. And I said, no, I don't. He said, yeah, you do. And, and basically he said, uh, uh, look at the market, the um, society, your demographer, look at the market, look at the, you know, and, and that's where the jobs are going to be, that's where opportunity is going to be, and you need to do this. And, and um, so I considered his good advice and took it. Um, so could, you've, you've done a little bit of this, but describe your career path as a gerontologist. Uh, I would describe my career path as a gerontologist as um, much of my life. Um, sort of uh, an accidental tourist in my own life. Um, and I've loved every minute of it. I would not necessarily advise it for everyone because perhaps they can't take the, the stress or the energy that it takes. I as I said, I, I was older. I was much older than most people. How many people um, complete their PhD, at least back then, when they're 43 or 44, however old I was? And so I went on the job market, and it was very constrained at that time, exceedingly constrained. Um, so I took a postdoc at Duke, wonderful opportunity. I loved it. And I, I fell in love with the South. My children fell in love with the South. And um, we looked for positions in the South and geographically trying to keep everyone happy. And that was quite difficult. So I ended up kind of piecemealing some opportunities together at Duke including working for the School of Medicine. So we had a small um, event. Uh, so what I ended up doing, I, I realized that time was clicking on my biological clock towards, meaning my biological clock towards retirement. I needed to get serious and, and find a real job. I couldn't play around anymore. Um, so I took a job um, back at Penn State. Unfortunately, part of my family remained in Chapel Hill and so I just could not do that. I then said, well, what opportunities will be there in that area? So I took a job to develop a graduate program in gerontology at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and, and switched my career path from a research-driven path to an administrative, more teaching path. It fit me, and that's okay. I've liked it. Um, so at what point in your career did you embrace gerontologists to describe yourself? It just sort of grew on me and sometimes I am it I embrace being a gerontologist and sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I am in that role as a gerontologist, but I'm also a demographer. And I'm also aging as good business. So I'm not one hundred percent a gerontologist. Nor will that be my only hat. I don't believe you should have a singular hat. I, I believe you should be multidisciplinary. I was trained in, as a multidisciplinary individual. I, I have a dual PhD, 
So uh, in my dual PhD, I was trained in, in economics. I took courses here. I took courses there. I have a minor in, in gerontology. So I took biology of aging in biology. So I'm not just a gerontologist. I am many things. Um, did, you, uh, did you have female mentors who impacted your move into gerontology? I had one fabulous female mentor, and Chris Himes. She's now dean in Chicago. Uh, I wish I could remember the university. I'm so far on names. And very interesting, Chris had finished her dissertation from University of UPenn, and um, the year I started grad school, and I'm probably 10 or so years older than, maybe more than that than she, and she has always been a staunch mentor, a very level-headed woman and, and someone there for me. She did not influence me going into gerontology. No, not at all. But she was a great mentor. So no, there was not a female that influenced me at, at all going into gerontology. I just sort of moseyed along. Um, what, what is unique about being a woman gerontologist? Well, one of the things I believe is very compelling and very unique in being a female gerontologist, a woman gerontologist, is that our field is so saturated with women and that we have that empathy, that compassion that we can take and understand what's going on with the other women. And I find that it helps when I have those wonderful male students so that you can work with them and, and discuss that and embrace the men and get them going on the path and help them in that. Um, other than that, I don't know. I don't like to separate and think into those kind of lines as I'm in my professional role at all. The Wiggle Project focuses on the legacies of older women gerontologists. Within that framework, is there anything else you would like us to know? Oh, legacies? I'm laughing here because, first of all, I don't think of myself as old. We all know the research on that. And legacies, what is my legacies? What are our legacies? And um, I find that interesting. Uh, I am thrilled that I am part of the business and aging component that is bursting into the field of gerontology that I think is so critical because I want to move that aspect beyond um, health care and seeing aging as only that part of the biological um, part of aging. But I also want as part of my legacy for those whose lives I have been so fortunate to interact with, to know that I was a good mentor. And I, I know that my husband sometimes, he would be so upset when he'd find me working at 3 a.m. or up in the middle of the night just because I was pacing and he'd say, why, why? And I go, they're not just students, they're they're students with husbands and children, and, and I'm, they've got to get their jobs. I want it to be right for them. And I have had to kind of go back, because I'm working now on my own research, so I'm excited, and only reply to one of my alum or one of the people I've mentored, only one a day, to try to keep it under control, but to know that I was and have been and will continue to have that mentorship role. And to know that to me is the best part of anything I have done. When I often say that when I die, I want to be known as a great parent and then as a great mentor. 
you know, a lot of people, they'll have lots of articles and things. But to me, that'll be what's important to me, that the person was always first. You know, and I like that.